Good morning, guys. How you guys doing today? Good. Good. I'm really excited to be here. First time speaking in front of probably, I don't know, 500 people. Just kidding. There's probably about, what, 100 of you guys here. Uh, definitely really excited, though. I was actually in your guys' seats two years ago in Pittsburgh. I was really, really excited, wanted to take in as much information as possible. The thing is, Troy already alluded to it, everything's recorded, right? Definitely just my goal of this presentation is for you to have one to two key takeaways, whether, it's, whether you can use it or not, um, with building the experience. I did want to, bless you, uh, bless you. Uh, I did want to thank uh, Troy for actually inviting me out here to actually speak and uh, be a part of this great panel. Uh, and I would be, uh, <laughs> I be, would be remiss if I didn't thank uh, a few of my mentors, Brett Zelaski uh, and Kathy Burroughs, who have helped me get to where I am today. Uh, I, wouldn't be, I wouldn't be speaking in front of you if it wasn't from their continued guidance and support. Um, but again, like I said, two years ago, was in your guys' shoes, really, really excited. So um, I'm actually a really hands-on guy. As you can see, I talk with my hands. No, I'm not Italian. Um, but, but for me, that's why being on the phone, I get really am animated. You know, smile and dial, right? Peep, smiles are contagious. Um, so again, uh, my name is Anthony. I'm from Cincinnati, Ohio. Cyclones in the house. Um, went to Ohio Northern University and uh, actually cold called Brett Zelaski uh, right out of college. Um, I said, hey, I'm a 22 year old uh, in, that has the skill set that's going to be successful here in the sports industry. And uh, they brought me in for an interview uh, similar to that of Talladega three and a half years earlier. I had no prior knowledge about soccer or NASCAR. The thing that set me apart and what we're gonna be talking about is building the experience is, I, I, I'm not the smartest person in the room, but man, I love to get to know who you are and provide that experience and make sure you understand exactly what you're getting. I'm a person, you know, Brett talked about it earlier, it's so much easier to buy over the internet. I want to provide you that ultimate experience to where when I call you after the, after the race or, or after a match, you are so excited and you're ready to pass me referrals, right? Um, so again, um, just really, like I said, really, really excited uh, to be here. So who all has ever been to a NASCAR race? Wow, a lot more hands than I thought. Uh, who all before this today, who all has heard of Talladega Super Speedway? A lot more hands. Who all has heard of Talladega Nights? There it is, right? Big, I'm actually a big movie guy, so uh, this quote uh, by Will Ferrell, if you ain't first, you're last. The reason why I have this up here is because it applies to the customer experience. If you do not deliver on everything with, that you are promising them, you, are, like, you will be last. They will spend money with your competitors. The zoo, the aquarium. I mean, how many times can you go see the giraffe? I mean, those are things that we, we fight against, so we have to deliver on everything that we're promising them as we're painting this picture and being storytellers, especially with where we are for NASCAR. We have two events a year, two. They're six months apart. Our average fan travels from over 300 miles to come see us, and a third of our buyers are from the state of Alabama. I wish we had more events so we could build relationships and get more people out there. When we were at the crew, it was great. With in-seat visits, handwritten thank you notes, random wow moments. Unfortunately, at Talladega Super Speedway, we have over 100,000 people. We have my, my sales staff, I have a sales staff of six. And we sell over 50,000 tickets. How, how on God's green earth are we supposed to create relationships with that? I'm going to tell you how. It's through not just one phone call and say, hey, want to renew? No, it's building those relationships. So today, I'm going to talk about three main core pillars when, in regards to building that experience. Ultimately, training your staff and hiring the right people the difference in importance being an order taker versus an order maker. And the value of relationships, not only with your consumer, but with your staff. 
So with training your staff, right? I was in uh, Frisco actually in February for a national sports forum. We had an inside sales manager workshop. One of the biggest hot, hot button items that is going on for most managers and most uh, hire, you know, most uh, HR people is how do we bring in consistent talent? The overarching theme was we want to bring in character. You can't teach character, right? The hustle, the drive. I can train talent, right? But ultimately, like I can't make you, what's your name, man? Randy. What is it? Randy. Randy. I can't pick up the phone for you and, 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 and make you make calls, right? But if you, if you have this mentality that I'm gonna like smile and dial, bust out 120 phone calls a day, I can teach, I can arm you with the skills to put in your tool belt to be successful, right? So build this with me. I want you to be successful, and if you buy into attitude and effort, that leads to results. I can't make you buy, but if I push you along this sales process and get you excited and bought in about what you're about to consume, I, I mean, I can only lead you so far like a horse to water, right? I don't know what the exact saying is, but um, you, can't lead a you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make a drink. Same thing in sales, right? You can, you can ask all these qualifying questions and yes, 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 it makes sense, right? What type of credit card do you wanna put it on today? Well, we've all been there. I talked to my wife, that's my favorite objection. <laughs> Great. The best objection though is when a wife says, let me talk to my husband. My favorite, because realistically I say, let's be honest. How happy are you gonna make your husband when you buy season tickets from me today? I don't think I've ever talked to a wife that has ever, been, uh, ever talked to a, a wife who called me back and said, my husband's mad because we get to go to sports. Never ever. She's like, you know what, you're right, I do make the decisions, boom, credit card. It's empowering them, right? Getting them to buy in and being a human. So what is our story, right? We have to be professional storytellers. Brett talked about it earlier, right? Product knowledge. How am I going to paint this picture, be Pablo Picasso and say all these great things about coming out to a NASCAR race? You have to be a storyteller. And it obviously goes into relationships, which I'll talk to, which I'll talk to you guys in a little bit about, but telling the story of Columbus Crew Soccer Club, first, first major league club, 1996, Lamar, Lamar Hunt invested 30 million of his own dollars, nine months, one day to build that stadium, right? Being able to com communicate that, people want to buy into something, people wanna be a part of an organization, they wanna be part of something bigger. That's what Talladega Super Speedway is, right? So who, who, are, who are my people that, 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 have been to, uh, that have been to a race before? My man, what's your name? Drew. Drew, awesome. What, uh, what race did you go to? Uh, Atlanta? Yeah. Awesome, how, how was it, man? It was fun. Right. It was loud. It was loud? You bring earplugs? No, all right. Well, uh, so have you, ever been to, you, have you ever been to Talladega Super Speedway before? So what stories have you heard about Talladega Super Speedway? It's uh, the biggest and the best race. Correct, right? So Talladega Super Speedway, largest track in NASCAR. 2.66 miles around. If you want to run around it, it's definitely three. I would not recommend running, uh, running around it uh, during the summer. It is really hot, especially with the asphalt coming back up on you. Um, but realistically as well, there's a, there's a stereotype that Talladega, this party atmosphere, right? There's, I mean, it is a party, it's great. I mean, th that's why people come. Oh, our, our biggest thing is a bucket list item and bachelor and bachelor parties. I mean, right? How do you tell that story and get them excited and build that relationship? Tell the story to them and get them to not be a one-time buyer, but to get them to continually turn it from a bucket list to an every year thing. So again, telling your story, you have to have that, like I said, proper sales foundation and product knowledge. If, if you don't have the product knowledge, how are you, how are you gonna sell anything, right? I mean, 
like I like I can teach you all these skills on open-ended questions and the intro and the close and and asking buying you know handling objections. But it, but if you don't know the difference between a lower bowl and an upper bowl or when we were founded, how, how am I supposed? How are you going to be credible and sell over the phone? So this thing ABI right? We just got introduced to Talladega Super Speedway ABI check in check out with clock management. No. Well, we have it. Um, so um, again, always be improving. Uh, Alec Baldwin, again, co co coming back to my movie thing, ABC, right? Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, great movie, right? A, always, B, B, C, closing, right? Great movie. If you haven't seen the clip, I'll send it around. I'll send it up. It's just a wonderful movie. Um, in, in regards to sales, but again, always be improving. So one of the things that we do now, uh, we started it probably a few months ago, is Monday morning trivia, right? We traditionally have a race every Sunday, and some of we have two, two, fa two fans of NASCAR within the office, and the other four, much like myself, had no prior knowledge of NASCAR. So how, how are we supposed to know, you know who the drivers are, who, who won the race, who's historically good here. So again, it's not only about current events that are happening within the sport, new rule changes, et cetera, but we're also talking about the history of the track because let's be honest, Nat NASCAR, attendance is dropping. And the reason why is because a lot of the old time, the, a lot of our older, the older generations who were, who were there in the 90s and the early 2000s, NASCAR changed their rules to stage racing to bring in Bring in millennials. So you know, we have to handle, handle these objections about all these new rule changes um, and, and just always be, in, we always have to be improving in regards to our staff. So again, sales training blogs, the empowered salesperson, uh, Brett Zalaski, Kathy Burroughs as well has, she always sent sold out seating. Um, and obviously, uh, Troy's with the Dallas Sports. Uh, and again, I, I promise you, Brett and I did not practice this beforehand. Um, I learned from the best, so this is something that we do now as well. It's called catchphrase, right? Childhood game, wonderful tool. Wonderful tool because it allows you to tell a story. It's almost like telephone, right? You, you see something and you're looking at it and you have to explain it to this person without using hand motions. Me, I'm not very good at it, I can't use my hands, but for me, it helped me and it's helping my staff become better storytellers. Because again, how, how are you going to get people excited about consuming your product if you can't tell the story, right? So, difference. What's the difference between an order taker and an order maker? What's your name? Lindsay, what's the difference between an order taker and an order maker? Okay, uh, kind of. A um, little bit of help, I'm in. Yeah. Um, order takers are someone that picks up the phone call, the phone immediately takes the order, order maker goes out and makes the order. Right, so uh, the difference between us at Talladega and us at the crew was that when someone called in and wanted to buy, we weren't like, great, what's your credit card number? Sure. We sold with the renewal in mind. We took the time and we take the time to say, hey, you know what, great, that's awesome that you wanna buy right now, but let me get to know you, Lindsay, on, on, on a little bit more granular of a level to make sure that what you want is actually what you want. Because there are people who move into your market who think they know what they want and they don't. So then they purchase, they go to the game and they have a bad time and you know who they blame? Us because we didn't take the time to get to know who they are as an individual and, and why they're buying. Because someone who calls in and wants, a full, you know, wants four full, full season tickets in the lower sideline, well, what about field seats? What's important to you? Do you want to spend time with your kids? What's your schedule like? Understanding more about them without just being like, hey, sure, sure, I'll take your credit card. Because again, you, you're not selling with the renewal in mind. The ser your service team will thank you. <laughs> your service team will thank you for asking more questions. One, one of my best bosses, he always said, Anthony, well, Katie, be more curious. 
even if you've asked four or five questions, ask a couple more. They're calling into you. They're ready to buy. They're walking into your store. They're, they want, I want the hat, the shoes. They want the whole kit and caboodle. Well, great. But we want to ask more questions so we can understand their values and be able to paint that picture again. Hey, you know what? Four, four lower sideline season tickets, it's okay. But based off of everything you told me, you want premium access, you want VIP parking, you want access to the players. The only way you can get all that is if you buy four, four, club, or, you know, four field seats or four court side seats. Well, how much more is that? Right? So being able to get them understanding uh, and um, you, you know, again, taking it from an order taker to an order maker. But the biggest thing that I, that I think my parents, both my parents are CPAs, so uh, not really of the sale, I mean, not really sales minded, but they're very relationship focused. So this is something that they instilled with me, or instilled in me, I guess, uh, <laughs> since I was a little kid was, listen, you have two ears and one mouth to listen twice as much as you speak especially on sales calls, you ask a question, hit mute, shut up, let them talk, get to know them, listen. Because if, if, if you catch the kid's name and then all of a sudden you're, you're taking them down that path to buy season tickets and, and you're saying, hey, Tim, guess what? How, how awesome of a dad are you gonna be when Johnny gets to get on the field and, and uh, play basketball, you know, or play soccer with some of the some of the players at, at our annual Career C Fest. That guy's gonna show you so much respect because you took the time to listen to what his kid's name was. Right, again, that's, it's building this experience. Building, because when I call John or whatever, you know, John, Tim, whoever it is, I want them to be excited to talk to me because I'm their guy at the track. I'm their guy, at, you know, I'm their guy at the team and this guy cares about me. We want, like, we're not just trying to take their money. Obviously, commission is nice, but the thing is, if you're not selling with a re renewal in mind, you're not doing anyone any, any favors. Again, be Picasso, paint that picture. Success stories sell, though. So, so it, what I mean by that is that when you're trying to paint this picture and being Picasso and being a storyteller, hey, Susie, one of, one of my clients has actually found tremendous value in being in this business, uh, being in this uh, business membership because they get a network with other, uh, you know, other industry leaders with, within the community, and, and they also have this ticket exchange program. Right? How cool is that? You know, again, being able to show value through through success stories because you're ultimately enhancing their experience and showing that other people are finding value. Who's ever bought some, something over the phone or online and got done and immediately regretted purchasing said item? Okay. Buyer's remorse, right? We should never, as a sales relationship focused team, ever have that person feel buyer's remorse. Wanna know why? Because this person should be so excited to actually purchase from you and to come to your race, to come to your game, that their, that literally their first calls to their wife or, or to the kids or, or to their neighbors saying, I'm going to Talladega, woo! Right? The best time to do that is when they're so excited, guess what? They, they could care less if they just spent $3,000 with you. I mean, to me, I'd, I'd be a little bit concerned because $3,000 is a lot to me, but for someone else, you know, the value of money. But because they're so excited, they'll give you a, so much information, it's not even funny. What are you asking for? Referrals. Referrals. I would much rather call a referral from someone else, from a client who has just bought from me, it's a warm lead, right? The definition of a warm lead. I'd rather call that person a thousand times out of a hundred than a than a single game Ticketmaster purchaser who came out to one game in 2013, right? Because that person probably doesn't even remember they came out to your game. You're calling with the crew? Who, the zoo? No, I'm just kidding. But um, no, those were some things that we heard with the crew, right? Um, but again, referrals. 
most people are afraid to ask for them. And if you have built that customer, like if that customer is so excited for you, you're only doing yourself a disservice, not only for an attendance standpoint, but for your wallet. Because if you're on, if you have commission, a referral is a slam dunk. So the value of relationships. How important are relationships in business? My man right here, what's your name? Clayton. Clayton. How important are relationships in business? I would say number one. Right, exactly. Relationships are everything, right? <laughs> but how are they created? Uh, right, and what's, there's, there, there, there's two things when creating a relationship. Building rapport, and what's the other one? So building credibility and establishing rapport. A relationship, if those two things aren't present, how are you gonna create a relationship with, with, with your customer? The relationship is a byproduct. You have to focus on how credible you are as an individual, how well do you know your product? How confident are you in building rapport? Building rapport, it's not the, hey, how are you? It's not, hey, how are you, right? Get to know them, be a person. That's how I was able to find success. I'm not the smartest guy in the room. I'm not the strongest either, look at me. But, but what I lack there, I am a people person. I can go up to almost any one of you and start having a conversation. The reason why, maybe it stems back to me being, you know, moving schools at, at sixth grade and not knowing anyone. But again, it, it, it stems back to being fearless and just relating. We're people, people want to buy from people they know, like, and trust. And if they don't know you, that's why you do I, my statements. I, I, my statements, right? Awesome, yeah, I, my's are probably one of my favorites. The reason why, because they open up to me and then I get to open up to them. Unfortunately, as a young sales rep, I didn't understand the definition between a good conversation and if they just wanted to talk to me about their kids or if they actually wanted to buy from me. But again, that's, that'll happen through time. Again, being relatable, being a storyteller, and ultimately, what does this lead to? Cultivating relationships. This is very essential for us at the track because again, we only have two races a year. Not everyone comes to both races. There's this thing called uh, SEC football uh, that's very dominant here in the South. Again, I'm from Ohio, so Go Bucks! Uh, but again, there is this thing called SEC football where the people who are coming to our spring race, they don't want to come to the fall because they say roll tide or go dogs or or eagle or whatever it is. So um, you know, again, and they're very passionate about it, and that's great. But again, if we only, if you have, imagine this, right? Hawks, my Hawks team, right here, all 60 of you, right, in the house. Um, that's awesome. So imagine if you guys had one game a year. Uh, how, 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 many clients, uh, how many clients do you have? Okay, more established Hawks person, sorry. Uh, <laughs> service people, awesome. How many accounts do you have? 350, nice, wow. Awesome, so, uh, what, 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 one of my old, uh, one of my previous reps is in here. Matt, how, how many accounts did you have at Talladega? Yeah, so at Talladega, we're looking at probably about 2,000 accounts for four people for one race. So, so you're talking about 350 people for one race or for one game. Do you think you could meet all of them and be able to establish that relationship with one? Okay. So, so again, how, how important would cultivating that relationship with these people be? Right, so, so what would you do in order to cultivate that relationship, like with all 350 of your people, besides just calling them for the renewal? That's a lot of C visits. Right, but, but here's the thing though, they're traveling for Average fan travels over 300 miles, so are you gonna get in your car and drive 600 miles to Wisconsin to go see someone in an RV? No, 
Yeah, so, so, so what we do is, uh, in, in, in order to, to, uh, to, to cultivate our relationships, I know Talladega, it's, it, it's a very unique situation, but the purpose of it is pur purposeful touch points. You don't just call someone just you don't you don't call someone just just to say hey ha, hey how are you you want you want to get my credit card okay cool no hey how's the RV how, how's your dog you know like being able to actually talk to them about sports send them a random email again being able to to have multiple touch points with them is how you create that relationship because again here at Talladega we can't see all two thousand of our clients virtually impossible. But one thing that one thing that we do do is uh, we actually create wow moments, right? I don't have my credential on, but uh, your credential, right? How powerful is that? Extremely, because you are able to get a lot of access that other people aren't. So again, what we do at the track is after our 100-hour week, our 16-hour days, that that Monday after all the campers, we're out there 8 a.m waving, saying thank you for coming out. It's something that, that our track president did, uh, put into place a long time ago, and e even though it's a small gesture, it goes a lo long way with our fans because they spend thousands upon thousands of dollars with us, and for us to sit out there after a long week means a lot to them. And again, he, the power of a handwritten thank you note, hey, thanks for buying your seats, really looking forward to meeting you, it goes a long way. If I get an email, I'm like, eh, whatever. But if I get something in the mail, it's like, oh, like it's so awesome. I'm like, yes, I want to read it. That's a bill, crap. But again, it's the power of a handwritten thank you note because you're taking time out of your day to see and to notify this person that, hey, you mean something to not only me, but the organization. Again, the power of your credential. So again, in closing, I just want, I wanted you guys to have one or two key takeaways, right? In regards to that, being able to build that experience all comes down to obviously hiring the right people, training them and developing their product knowledge, and ultimately investing in your staff. We work in sports, okay? Brett talked about it earlier. So exciting, right? Oh, cool, you work in sports. Sometimes we take it for granted. It is a blessing that we work in the industry that is sports. So again, that's all the time that I have for you today. If you have questions, I'll, I'll be outside. But thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it.